Greetings! This is I, Tantus Narabhan Dracovan, your lord and emperor here at the Dracovan Empire. Welcome to all of you joining me, of course, over on YouTube or live on Twitch. Hi, YouTube. Always good to have you here. You can see Twitch over to the side here, joining us, of course, as we usually do. But for you folks out there joining us later on, you know, uh, liking, subscribing, ringing the bell, and all that stuff is great ways to support today. Uh, those people already know about it, you know? We're going to be talking about the Anadai today. They're another humanoid race that you can play. Well, yes and no. They're both humanoid and not humanoid because they're going to be interesting to talk about. But yeah, have you played or had a game where a character playing the Anadai has been in a game with you? That's a question for today. Uh, you know, I, I dive into a lot of these ancestries, and an Anadai are an interesting one to discuss. So, uh, you know, why don't we dive in? And I don't uh, dawdle too much more. You know, I've given my shout out to, you know, given some support on the video already. So, where do we start with these videos? Well, as I usually do, uh, I like to help you guys out there if you want to do deeper research into these things. And of course, there's some books to check out. And that is... Oh, showing up there. There we go. Uh, of course, I would suggest starting with the origin point for the Anadai, which is Hell Knight Hill from the Ashes, Age of Ashes Adventure Path in 2nd Edition. This, it gives you a little bit of information about it, but if you really want to deep, go deeper into it, the Mwangi Expanse book from Lost Omens... These two will give you a lot of this information I'm going to talk about, plus, you know, statistics for playing them. Um, other than that, you also have, you know, the Wikipedia and Archives of, uh, and Archives of Nethys are pretty great places for a little bit of information. So, let's talk about these Anadai, and this is their in-between spider and humanoid form, because they are spiders in a way. But they are spiders that have a talent for illusions, transmutation magic, and they can change into humans and other humanoids. They also do have this middle form that's kind of in, in between the two of them. If you see an Anadai in its natural form, it's a spider as large as a medium-sized humanoid. Covered in colorful distinct markings and can be as unique as any other humanoid's identifying features. They do know that they are unnerving to a lot of others. They are spiders. So their talents for magic allows them to provoke a form of humans or other humanoids. Uh, and they'll show their true nature through sheens in their dark eyes and jerky mu movements. And an anodai will tend to not show its true form to strangers. They see that as kind of rude, except when they're threatened or forced to fight. And of course... They do have these hybrid forms, which some of them are able to take, which I'm picturing here, if you want to see them. Yeah. Um, a lot of their colors are inherited from their parentage, so, like, they'll have similar color patterns to both of their parents. That's a another note. And they typically measure about five feet in length from uh, their front legs to their rear legs when they're standing comfortably. They're about physically mature at 13, going through multiple phases of molting, and live to about 80. So, yes. And when in human form, they can resemble any ethnicity. There isn't a particular one that they kind of tend to. Alright. So, let's just... Do, 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 do. Sorry. There we go. Ah, there's one in human form. Of course, uh, showing off a Grundy uh, appearance, because they're matching the territory they're a lot from. So, yeah, they originate in the jungle jungles of Nuvakcha in southern Gurund. They can be in other nearby nations. They've also been found in Kazmaran and some other smaller islands uh, in the ruins of Asland. So they're not just in Gurund, but that seems to be their primary location. There are some of their people that do seek knowledge and information that the world is large, and so they become adventurers. Some want to support communities by doing this, becoming clerics or druids. Rogues, because, hey, you know, hiding your true form. And there are some that will deep dive into magical traditions for wizards and sorcerers, of course. You know, it, it depends on the situation that you're kind of going into for it. Um, where you're diving into in their studies. 
There's a one in their spider form. So Anadas court each other and raise children community. Commu communally. Community? Communally. Each of these web marriages involves three to five individuals who share domestic responsibilities and often have the same day job as well. Married groups vote for the same pol uh, politician and are willing to die to defend each other in battle. They're shy and isolationist, rarely leaving their nation, only granting visitors permission to visit one city, Wuluva. It has given to this erroneous rumor that they... Uh, they do have, you know, things like that. And they have communal marriages between three to five individuals. Kind of interesting thing, too, where they raise their young between them. Uh, there are rumors that they transform into hideous spider creatures every sunset, but, I mean, they are just spiders, actually. Um, so mushroom farms, weaving warm blankets are a very important part of it. And they do have a very heavily deep idea of, co of cooperation, respect between these pe their people. It means that they try to avoid sheer co huge conflict, and they can be very shy that way. And again, yeah, they understand there is a natural arachnophobia to a lot of other humanoids, so yeah. Ooh, that's cool to know that there's a number of NPCs in the Strength of Thousand Venture Pass. So that's if you want to look at some NPCs based on them, I would recommend that one then too. Cool. So yeah. Now, we can talk a little bit more just about the last thing, and that's uh, just the religious aspect of them, because Grandmother Spider, also known as Nana Anadi, is their patron deity. The devout followers believe that she guided them out of darkness into the freedom by plucking dewdrops from her web of light up in the, the night. They view her as the honorary monarch, but never expect the actor to take Nuvacha's throne. We'll talk about Nuvacha and their society there because it is a country of them in a different video. That's a, that's a different thing. That's their, you know, country. And it's technically different. But yes, um, I'll probably do like a mini video on it at some point in time because there's not a lot on uh, Nuvacha right now. But maybe we'll just wait until a book expands upon it a little bit. But keep that in mind that there's a lot of society for them and with an elected council in that that defines their society because it's their main place of being other than a couple other smaller settlements. So I do want to caveat that, caveat that here at the end a little bit because we talk about Anadai society. Well, yeah, their main population, we link it to. Not that they don't have places in the world that they can be found, it's just one main population. But yeah, hey, um, that was a quick one talking about the Anadai. And they are cool, uh, interesting figures. Being spiders that are technically also humanoids, because yeah, it is magical that they transform into humanoids. Their natural form is that of a big spider. But this kind of thing that it is also in a way natural for them to take on a humanoid form. And yeah, I showed off their hybrid form at the beginning, and that's probably not something all of them develop the ability to do. That's kind of like, again, take an ancestry feed or two to get that kind of stuff. But it's a cool idea that there are these spider people that are just shy, reclusive, generally nice, have these kind of friendly little communities where families of three to five partners will get together and, you know, raise children together between all of them while doing mushroom farming, weaving blankets, or whatever job they do. And it just reflects this kind of friendliness. And I think that's the difference between, like, what their form maybe shows off a little bit. Because, yeah, a lot of humanoids, spiders are terrifying. They represent very dark things. You know, a, the humanoids that we've talked about and the ancestries we've talked about over the many episodes, I can kind of say you look at people that deal with spiders and they tend to be people from the dark lands and maybe not the nicest people a lot of times now we look at spiders that are just living in the southern Gurund and doing the best in their little countries and the little places they live and working together and trying to be friendly to their neighbors while also being kind of fearful 
because, yeah, they're afraid that you're going to hurt them. Their form, without them doing anything, brings fear to others. And it's kind of sad that that's the thing they have to deal with. But it goes to show that overall their society is a very positive place and, you know, they make up for it in a lot of ways. And it's uh, the bravery and strength of ancestries like that that make them the most interesting to talk about. And an Anadai character could certainly have decided to venture out, explore the world, learn what it means to be part of the world, and travel plenty of places. Sure, very few of them travel out of southern Gurund. But who knows, you might find yourself somewhere in the inner sea, on an adventure, with some new friends, and kind of make up for your family. And maybe you just maybe reveal to them your gigantic five foot wide spider. Maybe. But that'll be it for today, for this one. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to check out all of my stuff. I do have schedules for my Twitch streams. That's where I get a lot of these tabletop stuff live. Talk about these. That's normally Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, slash Saturdays. Saturday's backup day. And if you want to see some live play of some games, hey. Wednesday at 9 p.m. EST, Crimson Queen. Check that out. And discussing tabletop on Saturdays at 6 p.m. where we talk about tabletop news of the week. Uh, yeah, they look like jumping spiders and are adorably huggable. I will not lie that spider is adorably huggable. I love jumping spiders. They're the cutest little things, and I love keeping them around, you know. Um, something about jumping spiders is just like, you're adorable in comparison to every other spider. I'm not going to lie. Uh, they make them look like that. Anyway, all right, everybody. Until next time. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, social media, Discord, Twitter. Until then. Farewell.